Morning, everybody. It's, what time is it? Quarter to five in the morning. And we are uh, on our way up that hill behind us there, up into Lady Bower Wood. It's minus two. Um, and you must be thinking, why? Well, it's International Dawn Chorus Day. And last year, of course, we were in lockdown, so I did a short video of the Dawn Chorus from the garden. Um, and I've done Dawn Chorus in wetlands uh, and in, uh, you know, small woodlands and on a few reserves locally. But I've never done one up here, which is ancient oak woodland. And at the top there, we've got heather moorland, red grouse country. So I've got my fingers crossed that I'm going to hear a dawn chorus like I've never heard before. I'm quite excited. It should be good. Oh, we've got a little bit of work to do as well. We've got a bird box to replace while we're up here. So that's enough of me waffling. Now I've got a half hour walk up to the top of that hill. So we'll see you up there. Well, the sun's coming up now, look. It's just putting its lovely golden light on them trees there, on the bark. Not brought my tripod this morning. Just, it would have been just too much. I've got two audio recorders, big camera, big lens. Uh, I've got the vlogging camera, a bird box I had to carry up here, and it just would have been too much. So if the shots are a bit shaky this morning, you'll have to forgive me. I think Lynn's calling me. She spotted something. What she spotted? Lynn spotted the pied flycatchers. So we're just going to hang around the area and see whether we can get some film. We've seen the male so far. So let's fingers crossed that there's a female knocking around somewhere as well. We've just seen both male and female going in and out one of the boxes. Moved a bit further up the hill now, and over in the distance, you can hear a cuckoo. Um, I'm a little bit surprised it's here this early, but why not? Why not? We've also got song thrush singing, chaffinches knocking about now, tree creepers. Um, it's great to sing in that way, the old squeaky gate call. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Uh, we have had another couple of pied fly catchers as well. Oh, this place is just amazing. I know I keep saying it, but it's just wonderful. Really, really good. So we're in the bottom corner of the, um, the woodland now, and this is where most of the pied fly catcher sightings are. And this is where we normally get spotted fly catcher and red start as well. But just pied fly catcher today. I've one or two sightings this morning, it's been good. A 
been joined by a coal tit, which is singing just behind us here. And I've heard the first nuthatch of the morning as well. Everything seems to be spread out. Um, as in the calls, it didn't all start at once, first thing this morning. Um, it's, it's now, I don't know what time it is, I'm guessing seven, quarter to seven, something like that. And some build birds like the coal tits, the chaffinches and those not chatches, are only just starting to call and sing. I mean, the trees still have no leaves on them whatsoever yet, so it is still early in the season up here, whereas back home, nearly all the trees are leaved up and birds are singing everywhere, so... It's not been the orchestral um, dawn chorus I think I was hoping for, but I certainly don't regret coming. The atmosphere here is always superb. There's a grill going over. <laughs> Um, and this, it's that anticipation, you know cuckoos are here now, and you might see one. The pie flycatchers might be here, and we have seen those, which is brilliant, but they could also be red stars. Could be spotted flycatchers, possibly. Um, we get tree pipits here. Um, and then up at the top, there's always a chance of white throat. Maybe, maybe that cuckoo. It's a steep old hill, this is. Whew, almost at the top. Another five minutes. And then we're going over that way to the open side of the reserve, where we can then have a look over the moorland and hopefully we'll see Curly with that wing. And that's where we normally get the cuckoo out in that open space up there, which would be marvellous. Well, I shouldn't have said that, because that means we're not going to see it. <laughs> well, upwards and onwards. Come on, people. Follow Lynn. She's heading in the right direction. Most of this video is going to be of me puffing and panting and grunting and groaning. So we made it right into the top corner of the reserve now. It's one of the best spots to observe the moorland beyond the reserve. We were here a couple of weeks ago and we got wheat here and ring goozle um, flying around these stone walls, which was really nice. No sign of them yet today. But there are lapwing in the field just to the side of me. We've had a mizzle thrush over the far side. And there's loads of meadow pipits flying around. I can hear curlew, but we've not seen one yet. I'm sure we will before we leave. Um, and the cuckoo seems to have gone quiet as well. But we're going to stay here for an hour or so. And we'll see what else we can come up with. What we've got at the moment, we saw these lapwings in the field earlier. Well, one lapwing, should I say. And as we were watching it, some Canada geese have come along and there was a meadow pipit feeding just in front of us. And then the linnet landed on the wall probably about 50, 60 feet away. And then all of a sudden, out the grass, we've seen these lovely little lapwing chicks, these three of them. And they can't be more than three or four days old, I wouldn't have thought. And of course these things are very self-sufficient as soon as they leave the nest really. You'll never see the parents feeding them. Because they just feed themselves. They're following the parents around. And as you can see them just picking up insects and things out of the grass. Brilliant to see. was a nice little bit of behaviour. There was um, a carrion crow uh, that flew over, 
straight away the other parent bird, whether it's male or female, I'm not sure. Took to the skies, alarm calling. The bird on the ground also started alarm calling. And these young birds just froze. They didn't move a muscle. And the parent flew around for 30 seconds, 40 seconds or so. And then carried on feeding. Young ones started to move again. And they carried on feeding as well. But this is one of the... Um, uh, the, the trials that they've got out here, of course. Out of those three chicks. Hopefully they'll all survive, but chances are that maybe only one will. And the others will be taken, predated. But uh, nice to see the behaviour of the parent birds calling, displaying, and those chicks, instant freeze, and all three chicks survived. Carrying crow flew over. I don't think it was really that bothered this time. But the parents were being a little bit cautious, which you can't blame them. They've invested a lot of time and effort into raising these chicks to this point. bizarre thing. Lynn and I were just talking as we were heading back down the hill about next time we come in three or four weeks time how we might see the, see the green hair streak butterfly which we saw here a few years ago and then one has flown just in front of us down here almost at Lynn's feet. It's a beautiful little butterfly. They feed on the um, on the bilberries um, that are scattering around the edge of the wall here and that's where it flew from as we walked past. But how about that? Oh, <laughs> brilliant end to the day. We're going to head off back down the hill, back to the car. It's mid-morning, we've been here for about six, six hours, something like that. Thank you for watching. Um, and we're going to come back in about two or three, maybe four weeks time. So we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Oh, subscription will be lovely and don't forget to ding a little bell to get notifications of future videos when they come out see you later ta-da